My name is Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today we're going to be talking about Blink. Blink is an Internet of Things service designed to make connecting to your devices quick and easy. Um, its main part is an app which you can download for free on the App Store or Google Play, uh, which is a drag and drop system allowing you to very quickly prototype and create controls for your devices. Uh, the Blink server is a cloud server which is free to use and uh, the way it works is once you've created your app you get given an authorization token and you need to import the Blink libraries into your Arduino IDE or for Raspberry Pi it's slightly different, we'll cover that later and you can use this authorization token to connect via the Blink servers without needing to know any network coding and in its simplest use cases you don't actually need to know any coding whatsoever. The Blink app is easy to use. Uh, creating a new project is as simple as naming it and choosing your board. And there are a wide range of different widgets you can choose from and the widgets are what you use to control your device. There are output widgets like buttons and sliders. There are also input widgets like labeled values which can tell you a value from say a humidity sensor or a temperature sensor. And there are a huge array of different ways you can get notifications from the app by linking any value that you receive from your hardware to notifications via Twitter or via email or on the phone itself. The Blink libraries are compatible with a huge amount of different boards and Blink have provided test sketches for pretty much every case that you would use it in. Uh, most of these all you need to do is put the authorization token in you receive from the app when you create it and your connection details and you are ready to go. Uh, today we will go through two basic use cases for it, one with a Node MCU connecting via Wi-Fi which is very quick and very simple, one with a Raspberry Pi also connecting via Wi-Fi which is a little more involved. So for our first test case we're going to use the Node MCU development board to turn an LED on or off remotely using Blink. So begin by getting the Blink app for either the iPhone or the Android. Uh, download it and create an account. Make sure you use an email address that you do use regularly because you will need to access it to use the Blink service. And also install the Blink library into the Arduino IDE. They're both available here on the Blink website. Now set up your node development board with a very simple circuit with one LED which comes from D0 and then goes back into the ground part of the board. And open up the app and click create new project. Now this new project I'm just going to call Node MCU and the hardware model is the Node MCU board which is already supported here in the list and it connects via Wi-Fi so I can leave that as it is. Now in the widget box just click button large but you can choose any kind of button you wish. I'm going to name this button LED and you open this just by pressing on the button the uh, output pin we've already set up to be D0 and we want this to be a switch so that when you press it it switches rather than having to hold it down like a momentary switch and on and off are perfectly fine labels for me. Once you've finished editing in the top right corner you just press the play symbol and this app is now live and ready to go. So back here in the Arduino IDE we need to go into the examples and the Blink library has a lot of example scripts and sketches. Uh, we are going to be using boards Wi-Fi because the Node MCU is a Wi-Fi board and ESP8266 standalone. This is the sketch they provide for that. Now when you created your project you will have had an authorization token sent to your email address automatically. So all you need to do is copy this authorization token into the sketch where it says your auth token and you will need to add your Wi-Fi and password also to make it work. Um, I will add my Wi-Fi and password now and upload it to the board. Now that that's uploaded, uh, all you need to do is go back to the Blink app and as you will see when I press the switch it turns the LED on or off. So uh, that took seconds to do, it's very easy to set up and since this is using the Blink cloud server uh, the node doesn't have to be connected to a computer, it could be connected to any power source and my phone doesn't have to be connected to the same Wi-Fi connection. I could turn this on or off anywhere using mobile internet. For this next example we will use Blink and the Raspberry Pi to create a simple app that gives us feedback as to whether a door sensor is open or not and also sends a notification to us via uh, push notifications on the phone and email when the door opens. Now let's build our circuit. 
we're going to connect our read switch we're using for the door sensor to GPIO pin number 17 through a pull-up resistor and we're also going to connect a single LED to GPIO pin number 22 also with a resistor to keep it safe. Uh, the full circuit diagram for this can be found in the article on the main website with a detailed description how to put it all together. Now in the Plink app we're going to create a new project. I'm going to call this one Pi Door and choose my Raspberry Pi 3 from the list. Uh, whatever Raspberry Pi you've got you'll probably find it is supported. We are connecting via Wi-Fi so we can continue. And I'm going to add a labelled value widget uh, which we will use to read the state of our door. It will tell us whether it is open or closed at any given time. So I'll choose labelled value from the list and uh, that email is just my authorization token for the project arriving. And I'm going to choose virtual pin 0 this time because we're going to use that in the codes to manipulate what happens. I'm going to give it a name. And I'm also going to, in the label underneath, just say door is before pin so we actually get a proper feedback saying whether the door is open or closed. And we can leave the reading frequency at one second. It's probably a little bit overkill for a door sensor, but uh, for this example it will work. Now we're also going to add widgets for notification and for email. Uh, you don't really need to do much with them except from put them in the project. Uh, you can have it notify you whenever the hardware goes offline, which I suppose could be handy for something which was uh, left somewhere else, maybe something remote. Um, but we're actually going to say exactly what this does in the code later. We are also going to add an email widget. Uh, this one's slightly quirky in that you don't have to put an email address here in the app at all. Um, we can do that also through code later, but it does have to be present in the app for it to work. Even if the app isn't running, uh, it does have to be there. I'm not fully certain why, but it's just one of those small quirks. And now we can press play and our app is done. So now we move over to the Pi to do some coding. Now we're going to do a little coding on the Raspberry Pi using the Blink library and also using the on-off library, which is a node package. You will need to have node.js already installed on your Pi to do this. You will also need to have installed these packages. I would also recommend you run the Blink test script uh, just to check everything is working. I'm going to assume you've already done all of that and quickly take you through the code that I have made. So I created a script called blinkdoor.js. I will take you through this quickly, line by line, though the full code is available in the article in the description. Uh, you can also download the full code from there also. Um, but just very quickly, uh, we have a, a var for the Blink library, because we require the Blink library to do this. We also have a, a variable for our authorization code. That is the code that gets emailed to you when you create the project. So uh, this uh, arrived 20, uh, half an hour ago, as you see, when I finished making the project, and I've copied it into my code here. Now we create an instance of the Blink library with our authorization code and we also create an instance of the on-off library and we uh, have made variables for both our read switch on GPIO pin 17 and our LED. Now uh, here at the end where it says both, all this means is that it will report a value to us whenever it changes. So if the switch is closed, it's a zero. As soon as it opens and it changes to one, it will tell us that change. When it closes again, it will tell us the change back to zero. Uh, finally, we are declaring a variable for our virtual pin. If you remember, when we made the app, we chose virtual pin 0, and I'm just storing that in a variable in case we decide to change it later. Now, the, this is the first function we're using from the on-off library. The watch function uh, will tell us whenever this value changes, and it will give us the value. So whenever the value of the read switch changes, we will pass that value to the LED. So if the door opens, that value becomes 1 and the LED turns on, which is what we want. Similarly, when it closes, the LED turns off. Now that we have this value, we can use it to check against. So we have an if statement here, and if the value is 0, we write to the virtual pin the word closed. This is our labeled value in the app where it says door is and then pin. This will say door is closed. We'll also log that to the console so we can have feedback on our Raspberry Pi when we run the program. Now, if our value is 1, we want to do the opposite. We want to write to the virtual pin that the door is open. We also want to log to our console that the door is open. And uh, this is where the Blink library really comes in, because the Blink notify method allows you to send any custom message to your phone which you will receive as a push notification as long as the Blink app is running in the background. 
Similarly, uh, we're going to use the blink email method, which will send any email, uh, send to any email address anything that you want. So I have to send, uh, send to me a thing saying door report and the door has just opened whenever the door opens. And uh, the reason I've used both of them is that if you don't have the blink app running in the background, you won't get this push notification, but the email always sends. Finally, we're just going to do a little housekeeping. This little thing at the bottom is essentially the same thing as the GPIO cleanup method you've probably used before with the Raspberry Pi. All this means is that it will reset all of the pins when we quit the program. So now we can test our code. If we run the script using Node, all being well, we should connect to the Blink cloud uh, because our authorization key was already in the script that we just made. Now, when I move this door sensor, we get a log to the console saying the door is open. We get a notification on the Blink app. And I have an email that I just received zero minutes ago saying the door just opened. So uh, this is a very powerful way to get notifications about your Internet of Things devices. I didn't need to learn any port forwarding or network code to do this. The coding itself wasn't particularly difficult. I mean, I'm not very good with JavaScript, but I still managed to, uh, to do this using their documentation. Um, and this is really just scratching the surface of what you can do with the virtual pins and Blink. Uh, Blink is a relatively new service, but I found it very easy to use. And with these two short projects, I hope that I've given you a good starting knowledge of this app. And I hope that you try it out for yourself. If you do, please let us know what you do in the comments on the website. As always, you can click the link in the description for the full article. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more weekly tech tips and giveaways.